What were they thinking? And I mean that seriously. Who thought this was a good idea? Hey guys, how do we keep it dirty off-road? And in this video, I'm gonna give you guys my impressions on the Cybertruck from the perspective of an off-roader, specifically a Raptor owner, one that likes to go fast in the desert, but also from the perspective of an EV fan that has owned a few EVs over the years. There is some good here, but for the most part, the best way I can describe the truck is a waste of space. Not that the truck itself is a waste of space, more like there is a ton of wasted space in the design of this truck, and it's clear our car guy designed it. Now, I've held off on my review of the Cybertruck for a while. I wanted to see the truck in person before passing judgment, and I wanted to get under the truck and view the suspension for myself to see if we could use it on the trails. Because at the end of the day, only Tesla is making viable EV replacements for gas cars because of their approach and the Tesla supercharger network. No other manufacturer has even come close yet. But before we start, a few caveats. I have not gotten a chance to test drive one yet. Once test drives are available, I'll schedule one. But for now, this review will mainly focus on what we could see and experience inside of a Tesla showroom. This was also not a planned review. We did not go to the showroom specifically to review the truck. We were actually at the Tesla service center to replace our aging 10 year old wall connector that just stopped working and they happened to have one in the showroom. So we checked it out and decided to capture some footage. Unfortunately, our showroom had very, very loud music playing. So the audio from the video is not really usable unless I want a copyright strike. I think this is intentional from Tesla. There's a lot of interest in the Cybertruck right now and a lot of it is not great because it's not living it up to the promise from Tesla. But those that have driven it tend to give it glowing reviews, which I don't understand after seeing the truck. Most people giving this truck a glowing review are not truck people and it shows because a truck guy would have seen that front suspension and said, hell no. Now, before we get to the suspension, let's talk about the design. This thing is ugly. There's no way to sugarcoat it. It's ugly and it does not get any better in person, but it did surprise me how small it is. It's not as big as a full-size truck. It does have a full-size bed, but it's shorter and lower than I imagined. To give you guys a comparison, it's a little bit bigger than a Chevy Colorado. Here's my son next to it. He's five foot nine. He's taller than the rear passenger entrance. It's kind of wild how low the back of the passenger cab really is. Now let's take a look at the back. What really matters to most of the truck guys, the bed. First thing that stands out is this large hump at the bottom of the back of the truck. I think this is for the tub in the bed, but this will be a problem off road. This is going to hang and drag everywhere you go. It's also plastic, so this is gonna get damaged or easily ripped off. Now, the tailgate is soft open, but it's not a power close and it's heavy. In the bed, you get tie downs down low with L-Track towards the top and LED light bar for the whole bed. It's great the truck has multiple tie down options, but I feel like it should have been the other way. The L-Track down low and the tie downs up top. I've carried a bunch of load in my trucks over the years and I've always struggled with just the six tie downs down low in the bed. Most things you carry won't stick out over the bed, so you need a lower top point to secure them. So I've installed the L-Track on my trucks because of that, and the Tesla has made the same mistake here that every other truck manufacturer has done. It put tie downs down low and the L-Track up high, assuming you're only gonna be carrying large loads. I don't know why truck manufacturers do that. To me, it seems like they merged a Toyota Tacoma and a Honda Ridgeline bed to make this setup. Also, the tie downs were jammed or stuck, so we could not get them to move by hand on this floor model. But one good thing here is the bed light. They go around the whole top on both sides and they look extremely useful. Even four bed lights, while nice, were never enough, so this is a cool design feature covering the whole bed. The retractable bed cover is nice. I know Tesla says you can stand on it, but the rails don't have much protection and I could see those being a problem. If dirt or mud gets in there, you're in a world of hurt trying to get the cover to close and open correctly or even clean it, it's gonna be a pain. And we've seen a lot of these retractable bed covers have issues with serious off-roading. Also with the off-road vibrations, it's easy for those to slip or get warped. I know it's there for aerodynamics, but I honestly could go without it and I wish there was an option to order it without. But I was struck by the sheer amount of plastic back here. The whole tub is plastic and it stinks. There's so much plastic. There is a very prominent odor coming from the back when you open the bed and it looks cheap. 
Even the composite beds on the Toyotas and Ridgelights don't look this cheap. But one good thing here is the rear trunk. A very cool feature that was first introduced in the Honda Ridgelines. Tons of storage space under here, but it's also plastic and not sure how accessible and useful this place will be when you're carrying a load in the bed. And if this is the cause for the large rear hub, I would rather go without it for buried clearance off-road. But my biggest complaint back here is the amount of wasted space. There is a lot of wasted space back here. The bed sides are thick and I feel like they should have been used for storage. I know there's part of the giga casting frame in there, but there is a ton, and I mean a ton of wasted space. Even the tailgate is huge and I would have honestly liked to see some storage in there too. I know Tesla is trying to reinvent the truck, but there is a huge missed opportunity. The bed design on the Ram and Ford trucks is far superior than this. Even the tailgate on the Ridgeline and GM trucks and Fords are far superior. In trying to rethink the truck bed, Tesla somehow made it worse. Which brings us to another odd choice, the front trunk. All EV trucks have a front trunk because there's no powertrain there. The Cybertruck's front trunk is small. You can't fit much in there, but maybe a collapsible camping seat or two. I don't think you can even fit golf clubs in there. You definitely can't fit a cooler because the door mechanism will get in the way. Again, a wasted opportunity and a waste of space. Now I understand that there has to be something behind those panels. Drive unit, the steering, AC, all that in there. But Ford was able to create a large space in the Lightning that makes this look like an afterthought to Tesla. Again, wasted space. But the size of the front trunk makes no sense when you go inside the truck. There is a ton, and I mean a ton of space between the driver and the windshield. A cavernous amount of space. You could sleep one up there. I mean. How much is in there that the front trunk had to be so small? Why does the gap from the driver to the windshield have to be so far away? It's yet another example of just wasted space. It would be okay if say Tesla put a full windshield heads up display, especially with the no cluster in the front of the driver. I hate having to look off to the right for a gauge cluster. Tesla should be adopting heads up display already to replace the clusters. Doors do feel like they have some weight to them. They look to be all stainless steel and they are heavy. Not to be traditional, Tesla uses buttons to open the doors, but what immediately struck me here is the amount of space under the dash. There is a ton of space in there. You could easily fit two backpacks up here. I actually like this space. I've always hated the inefficient design of most truck center consoles. It's why I replaced the one on my truck. With the space being open, the options of what you can do are endless, or just keep it open if you want it. The center console is okay. Two slots for cell phones with wireless charging. Cup holders are okay. Wish they were deeper, but fine. And an okay amount of storage in the console. Nothing really stands out here. It's just the standard console. Steering wheel's funky, not gonna go too deep into that. Plenty of others here have covered this, the drive-by-wire steering already, so there's no reason to, to really hash that out. But another funky item here is the sun visors. They are held in place with magnets, but the panels they connect to don't feel sturdy at all. As Ethan put it, those are not gonna pass the Ethan test. They at least do extend down so you can block out the sun and flip to the side, but the whole things feel flimsy. Dome lights are kind of cool. They look to be captive touch buttons on the ends. Makes for a cleaner look, and I actually dig it. Glove box is funky though. It's more of a drawer than a glove box. Rear seats look decent. They do fold up and have a flat floor. Screen is nice with some small vents, but the roof is pretty low back here. I think taller passengers are gonna have issues back here. But the oddest feature on the inside of the truck is the comically small rear view mirror. That's an iPhone 11 for reference. Now I get it, there is not much visibility through the rear window. None if the bed cover is rolled out. But come on Tesla, a digital rear view mirror should have been used here. Rear visibility is important on a truck, not just for the traffic around you, but to keep an eye on your cargo in the bed. There isn't even a digital rear view mirror option yet. Ram have options for digital rear views. I'm sure Tesla could add one with software down the road, but yet this is another miss by Tesla. Now finally, let's get to what you guys care about, what I care about the most, the suspension. First, I just wanna say that anybody that takes this truck off-road, this is not an off-road truck in any shape or form. We raised the suspension to the top and immediately were surprised by the front upper control arms. As one of my followers put it, the upper control arms look like paper clips. Worse even, because it's flat stamped steel arms, 
arms, that's not even suitable for a car, let alone a truck. There is very little strength in those for even on-road driving. They're not even going to take any off-road of use. And sure enough, we have already seen them fail. These are brothers put tracks on a Cybertruck and the ball joints and arm failed. They have not released the details on how it happened, but it's safe to assume it happened on something tame. Which brings us to the spindle and knuckle design. There is maybe 3 8 inch of clearance between the tire and the ball joint. Horrible design. Tires are gonna rub on it when aired down and it leaves no space for increasing the tire size. Not that you could get a bigger tire in there without major bodywork and structural changes to the frame. Both the frame and the panels get in the way and in the rear, the charge port gets in the way. So tire upgrades are gonna be challenging for this truck. Anything outside of the stock offset wheels and tires will cause problems here. Lower control arms is at least a decent solid chunk of cast aluminum, but that's it. I couldn't get a good look at the shock mounts on the ACL, but I think the skid plate is there to protect the bolts. Another odd design for an off-road truck. Truck is also running on Tesla's air suspensions all around, and that's also another odd choice. Air suspension is another very complex system that could go wrong, and I'm not a fan of it on an off-road truck. I had a Line Rover with air suspension a long time ago, and within the first year, this brand new Rover was having problems. Tesla air suspension is notorious for developing leaks as they age and they're expensive to replace. I wish Tesla would have given us a coilover option here, especially for those that want to off-road. Now, I could not get a good look at the rear. What we did see was not good. Lower control arms are hydroform steel. There was a lot of panels in the way, so we could not really see much else, but those arms are gonna, they're, they're, those arms are good for road use. They're not the best for off-road use. There's no structure inside of them and they can bend with off-road use. But the most surprising bit was that this showroom early production model was already damaged. While looking at the back end, it was clear something was wrong with that rear passenger tire. It was not exactly straight. Other side was straight, so it was not the rear steering. That side was possibly bent already or not aligned correctly. Either way, not a good look for a showroom model. Now, a final thought on the tires. The tires are just weird. First off, the covers. They have rubber at the edges, and if you don't know already, those are damaging the sidewalls of the tires, so Tesla's not shipping them anymore. I wonder why nobody's done that before. But the tire itself is odd, the shape is odd. They're more like tires you normally see on lowriders. You know, it's like, it looks like somebody took a thinner tire and stretched it over a wider rim. These tires are specifically designed for the Cybertruck. So my guess is they're EV low resistant tires and the sidewalls are designed for aerodynamics and to reduce noise and resistance. Now, we also saw the issues with the fingerprints. They're all over the truck and they look awful. And the panel gaps are typical Tesla, awful and inconsistent, but a little worse than normal with the stainless steel. And yes, be careful of the trunk and the doors. All edges are sharp and it shuts on your hands. It will cut you. Best feature of the truck is the interior. It was nice. But overall, I was very disappointed considering how great the Model S and the Model 3 are. Tesla is saying the Cybertruck reimagines the truck in terms of style and use. But as a truck, it does not do truck stuff all that good. There is a ton of wasted space everywhere. There should have been added storage everywhere to improve the truck's utility. It should be easy to get into the bed or get things out of the bed. It's worse than any other truck. It's actually a pain to get into the bed. Tesla is also touting this truck as an off-road truck, showcasing clips of it in Baja and at the off-road parks in California prior to launch. But as a truck, this thing is awful and more built like a minivan with off-road tires. So I caution anyone taking this truck off-road in its stock form. At the very least, upgrade the control arms as soon as they're available from the aftermarket. Even the Tesla Model S and the Model X arms are much beefier than the ones on this Cybertruck. In my opinion, this truck has no place off-road, not even for overlanding in its stock form. That suspension design will not be able to take the stress of off-roading. I wouldn't even trust this on the road with how weak that upper control arm is. At the end of the day though, the truck will be a nice status symbol. And that's a shame. I was hoping for a proper competitor to the Raptor yet again. With the Tesla powertrain, battery tech, and the charging network, they could have built something amazing that would have blown away all trucks on the market today. Yeah, it would have been ugly, but who cares if it was a performance truck, both on pavement and dirt. But what we got was a ton of wasted space in a minivan designed by car guys, not truck guys. That's my outlook on the truck from the perspective of a guy that loves EVs and wants an off-road EV. But I think for now, I need to keep looking. 
What's your thoughts on the Cybertruck? Question comments below, and thank you for watching.